I want you to think about the last time you high-fived someone. Was it a few days ago? Weeks? Or it may just be a few minutes. But I'm probably guessing all, if not most of you in the audience, can't quite remember, considering that it's such a habitual gesture. I mean, it's not something we consciously pay attention to. I completely understand. Now this may get some of you to start wondering, who even started the high five? And how did it come to be such a prominent gesture? Why don't we start by briefly touching on the history of high fives? The start of it all was at a Dodgers baseball game back in 1977. The Dodgers outfielder Dusty Baker hit a home run, and as he was returning to home base, his teammate Glenn had his arm up. Dusty was thrown off, and he didn't know what to do. So his response was to slap Glenn's hand. Ever since then, high fives have been a symbol of team pride and are now considered a universal gesture. But high fives aren't only limited to sports games like baseball. It's quite versatile in use. Celebration, encouragement, motivation, greetings. The list goes on. And now what's actually interesting is that while high fives are a relatively recent invention, it comes naturally to us as if we've known how to do it since the beginning of time. If you put your hand out in front of a baby, then their response by instinct is going to be for them to also reach out to you and touch your hand. They never learned how to do it, but it, it just comes as an instinct. For something so common around us, I realized we rarely stop and think about the meaning behind it. So, I decided to take a deep dive into high fives, how it shapes us and our surroundings. And here's what I found. First, it's a mutual exchange of positive energy. Unlike other nonverbal gestures like, let's see, uh, a pat on the back, which is a relatively one-sided gesture, high fives tend to be two-sided. Both parties raise their arms, extend forward, and meet at the palms. Both receive a sense of mutual excitement, and best yet, it's quick. In a split second, the intangible bond between the high fivers is strengthened. Now, high fives could be used for momentary expressions of connection, but it could also contribute to long-standing connection as well. Back in 2019, I was at our sister school in Vietnam for a service trip, where my team taught the students between, from grades between one through five English. Along with the excitement, I was feeling a little nervous due to the language barriers between us and the Vietnamese locals. I mean, mind you, I only knew how to say xin chào, which means hi in Vietnamese, and I really hope I'm saying it right. But trust me, just knowing that wasn't going to get me too far. But by the end of the trip, I even forgot that I was worrying in the first place, because I have connected with several of them on a much deeper level than expected. Huh, how was this even possible? Looking back, I realized we were naturally incorporating high fives into our routines. Whether it was every morning when the students walked in through the gates, before they went up to the classroom, when they completed an activity, or simply when we just passed by each other, we would always, and I mean always, go for a high five. High fives were everywhere, and it was those nonverbal communication that allowed for such a profound connection. It facilitated a worthy process, the language learning of the students. I've come to learn that high fives are indiscriminate of language nor culture, and thus allows for people of all kinds to connect with each other. High fives are special and rare for this ability. Now there are some gestures that cannot be globally used as it may translate to an offensive gesture. Let me give
give you an example. One common way of showing affection here in Japan is by stroking another person's head. Now this is considered unmannerly in other areas around the world, such as Thailand and Indonesia, where one's head is considered a sacred place. Another example is making the V sign, commonly known as the peace sign with your fingers. And I'm pretty sure most of you have done it in pictures before. Even a classic photo pose could be the same thing as giving the middle finger in places like the UK if it's done with your palms facing you. And we know they mean completely different things. But high fives are appropriate usage worldwide, which heightens the transcending barriers in language across culture. Now so far, we've talked about high fives and the importance in regards to connection. But not only do they contribute to connection, they actually improve performance. A study conducted by the University of California, Berkeley, found that NBA teams with a greater number of high fives between the players in a game demonstrated higher performance. Not only that, teams with a greater number of touches also tended to have a higher passing ability. I was actually a little surprised when I first saw this study because, right, we're talking about going from simple high fives to winning professional basketball games. But this is where it gets interesting. Touch is associated with trust, and trust is the feeling that results after oxytocin is released. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, just try to think of oxytocin as a trust and bonding hormone. When touch occurs between people, it fosters a sense of trust, which then motivates team members during athletic activities, including games, which then, again, leads to an increase in performance and eventually a win. Now, if we pay attention to the other small but omnipresent details in life, like facial expression, handshakes, proxemics, the sky is the limit to how much we can learn. Let me introduce you to an equation my math teacher asked us to solve on the first day of school, back in seventh grade. And I believe this is applicable to almost all situations. And it's something I live by. P plus E equals S. Now I want you to have a think about what this may stand for. And I've already seen some confused looks, but don't worry, because I had the same reaction. It's participation. to the small gestures and interactions around you and think about how they have an impact on you and your surroundings. Make sure you enjoy those small realizations and success will follow. Now the definition of success here is different for everybody, I understand. It may be that you learn something new about other people, about group performances, communication, or it may simply just be that you learn something new about yourself. Gestures are so much more than just body movement. So the next time you non-verbally communicate with someone through your eyes or raising your eyebrows, and of course, high-fiving someone, stop. Take a moment to think about all of the endless meanings behind something seemingly simple. Thank you.